Hello everybody and welcome back to Promise Gaming and more! Hearts of Iron 4, Old World Blues, The Enclave Reformed. We are becoming increasingly legitimate. All the non-pure humans are starting to like me a lot more. Which means we're going to be able to do some pretty cool stuff. Lots of political power, lots more manpower is going to start coming in. A little bit by little bit anyway. Far better than it was when we were the genocidal enclave. We are also building Vault City University, which means we are going to get some pretty nice more uh, legitimacy coming out of that as well. We could deal with the Von Graffs, which gets me weaponry, which I don't need, or lose war support and stability to get, again, more weaponry, which I don't need. And then there are things we can do to be getting, like, some extra war support and stuff like that, just reduce some stuff. We could spend power to get uh, weekly stability, blah, blah, blah. But we're already at max. Not particularly worried about it. We're trying to preserve Japanese culture rather than force the American culture upon people. Again, we're very egalitarian. We are the good guys. If you didn't know, we are the good guys. Uh, let's see. So the bear, we only have to wait a couple more days and we should be able to pop the button. We're not going to worry about them anymore. Goodbye. Thank you. Um, we could arm some raids. It's been a while since I did that. Let's try to get some spies down there again. This is still nice, reducing their suspicion by another 20 or so. It's helpful. All right, so we got all that. Now we can go for a show of force, and that will give me... That one happened immediately. I should just press that before. All right, our new city, and then we get full control of Vault City, and it becomes a core. Sure. I mean, we're not taking the Yakuza territory as a core, but who cares? As opposed to Vault City being a core, it was probably pretty good. Yeah, because there's like 4,000 potential people here. Civilian population. You actually can look at this. The recruitable population here is... 52 out of 76 right now. The Yakuza territory does actually have a lot more people in it. There's actually a pretty hefty amount of population in the Yakuza territory. So turning it into a core could have been good. But at the same time, does it matter? Because I'm going to be getting plenty of non-core manpower, so that offsets some of the damage done by not making it into a core. In the meantime, we got a thousand more manpower, which is probably more than they would have been able to contribute anyway. And we got some political power, because who doesn't like more political power? It's fine. All is well. This is good. This is fine. This is good. I like it. Heaven's Gate declares war. Heaven comes for you all. Tremble in terror. The angels shall crush you. Complicated circuitry is done. Cool. More research speed for me. Uh, reinforce rate, encryption, decryption, all these things are certainly good. Is something else better? Yeah. Production efficiency and so on for more power armor is definitely better. We're about to finish with the walking tanks. Which means we don't entrench very quickly, but we also don't care. As long as we keep moving, we keep killing. Vault City is now a core. Now we can work on the power plants, and then eventually rebuild the power grid. That all seems fine, but instead I'm going to work on a common enemy, so we get 20% more war support, because why not? We're about to go to war. I also don't need power. Trade, honestly, is not that important in this game, in this mod. It's very important if you want your advanced technology and electronics. But that's honestly about it. It doesn't do much else beyond that. Alright. We're gonna go ahead and kill you. Launch the biplanes! The vertebrates, Whatever they're called. I don't know. Grab Klondike. Klondex. Kleenex. Kleenex on IRL 5. I don't know. Go over here. He can work toward Vault City, but I don't care. As long as we get Klondike. And then we land, and then we land, and then we land, and he's dead. Just in time for the walking tanks. Thank you for all of your miscellaneous equipment. Most of this is crap weaponry that we'll never use. But there we go. All right, so last time we went down purity, and that was fun. Now we can go down principle. Corruption was rife in the old world, but we are different. Technology is dangerous. It destroyed the world once before, and we cannot allow it to do so again. Do we like this? So there's reconnaissance, infiltration, assault, training time, army better... Wow. Wow. All infantry, motorized, and mechs. Pretty good. And champions of virtue. Holy crap. But last time what we did was we were hurting our recruitable population factor to get better army attack and so on, better air superiority, better breakthrough and soft attack, and then this. Yeah, let's go down principle. I think this is intended more to be like the um, Brotherhood of Steel path, but it works just fine for me. The Jackals are actually starting to win again. What the heck is happening here? All right, go over here, and you guys are going to come all over to the airports outside of New Reno. 
How are we doing in terms of training up more troops? Uh, actually starting to get somewhere. All right. And yes, after a slight delay, we're going to take all states. Thank you. Goodbye. Thomas Rimmy falls ill. Rimmy Rim. Rimmy Rim Rim Rim. Let's see. I do need some more advanced electronics. That doesn't leave me with much right now. We have basically nothing. At least until we are done building Vault City University, which should not take that much longer. Got our metal armor. Um, I would love nothing better than to be improving our power armor, but we have to wait at least a little bit longer. Don't need any of this. Or this. This is fine. And I can't go for any Tesla energy weapons. I don't have the advanced energy weaponry. We got this very early before as a genocidal enclave, and that was fun. But for now, it doesn't do me any good. I don't think I need anything else here that builds up my economy. Don't need ships. I don't need planes. Not going to work on robotics or motorized right now. Could upgrade some companies. But I think for now, let's go with the guerrilla tactics. But yeah, it is time to be upgrading a lot of our uh, companies. Definitely. All right. All three of you, go over here. Okay. So we're setting up right now nicely to get to fight the NCR, destabilize them, and start a rebellion. I do need a little bit more army experience because I'm running out of national focus options and I would like to go for the Department of Defense. Because there's some good stuff to be had here. A bit more army experience, some land doctrine, research slots. I didn't even realize that was there. That's great. Stability, mobilization, recruitable population. Holy crap, these are amazing. Oh my god, these are great! What? Draft American citizens as an emergency. Now, it does cost... Look at this. It, everything costs army experience. So that's the real trick, is you do have to be spending a lot of this in order to get all these different benefits. This is fun, though. Military leader cost goes up by 50%. Starting level of new army leaders, plus one. Max planning, plus 10%. And then starting attack, defense, logistics, and planning skill goes up. Wow. Old remnants, new generation... Oh, this is cool. I like this mod. I'm really glad the author reached out to me. The Enclave Reborn uh, sub-mod is really fun. It really fleshes this out. It feels like there's so many different ways to play the Enclave. Kaisar's Legion's really fleshed out. The NCR's really fleshed out. The uh, Washington, uh, Western Brotherhood's really fleshed out. And that's kind of it currently in the game. I mean, I know they keep adding in more. Like, I don't want to make it sound like the developers aren't continuing to add more to Old World Blues. They're trying to do stuff up here, for example, along the Broken Coast. And now the cons are better and blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah, and that is cool. But this, this is a whole new level of awesome. The League of Citizens. As it turns out, many Wastelanders have their own views of ghouls, mutants, and primitives. Uh-oh. First citizen Lynette of Vault City has joined ranks with many Enclave moderates, who think that civilized Wastelanders are real Americans, but that tribals need a firm guiding hand, and mutants and ghouls need a plasma blast. To many, Vault City is a model town, peaceful and prosperous, and the comparison to the riffraff of New Reno or Shady Sands only bolsters their views. Lynette has League of Citizens, promising to rebuild all of America in Vault City's image. Two steps forward, one step back, lose political power. Increase the popularity of oligarchy, which is the elites, I think. So Lynette becomes a new leader. She has something of a point, gain stability and political power, lose legitimacy, that's a no. Or, no, let us go forward together, seven legitimacy, the oligarchs still become popular, and Lynette is in charge. Oh, charismatic is so good. This is better in every way. Let's go forward together, 76% legitimacy. 76 trombones led the big parade. I don't know why I thought of that. It's just anytime I say the word 76 something or whatever, I feel like I have to talk about 76 trombones. All right, so we've gotten the common enemy. We are done with all of that. We could go for the gecko power plant and eventually another civilian building slot. Uh, just lots of power grids. That's it. This is honestly not that helpful. It adds a new technology, apparently. The civilian power grid. I assumed I already had access to this. But yeah, it just gives me a bunch for free. I don't need power. Power is not important to me. Power is unbalanced, I would say. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. We can start really screwing with the NCR and prepare to arm some sympathizers. And I think I will get started on this. 
We have to hide from the bear for another 59 days. Let's go ahead and arm raider gangs. Since we have plenty of uh, military equipment, that's not the issue. Not all of it is good. Most of our military equipment sucks. But hey, if I can just hand off a bunch of crowbars to a bunch of raiders and say, go cause problems, and they do it, well, I'm not going to complain. All right, let's see. Um, um, I like attrition. I need a lot more electronics research speed, to be honest. We've been very slow in getting things like encryption and decryption. Getting more of that honestly seems worthwhile to me. Now, yeah, that used up a lot of my political power. So we're going to be pushing it a little bit here, but I think we'll still be okay overall. Eventually. And, you know, the extra 11% certainly has not hurting. And if we have to stop doing a national focus for a little bit, we can. A raider attack. Okay. Legitimacy, lose manpower. Political power, war support. Lose legitimacy. No. Um, honestly, I think I'm committing myself to just going for the most legitimate playthrough ever. So we're doing this. We're up to 81%. I'm extremely legitimate. Love me. Love me, you fools. What are we missing? Just power armor? More power armor. Okay. We're not producing any machine guns or support equipment or anything. Hope I don't need any of that anytime soon. Plenty of freaking energy weapons. That is not the issue. No, I take that back. Again, I did just say it's not... It's not that we don't have plenty of infantry equipment. That is the case. Energy weapons is what we want. What we have is plenty of... Um, what are those? Tire wrenches? What are they called? I don't remember. It's been a while since I worked on that. Hold another military theory committee. Let's get myself up to that 100 army experience I need. This should get me pretty darn close. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt plagues the nation. All right. So we can go for organizing the sympathizer. If I could just control what kind of infantry equipment was being sent off, this would actually be really good. But I don't think we can. This does get me some political power. It gets me more overall than not doing it. What I'm thinking is if I don't pick up um, a national focus, I'll be generating 3.45 political power a day, which is going to be good for hiding for the bear. But in the 40 days it takes to do this, I'll have 50 political power by the end. So it's technically a net gain. Let's send out some more spies. We're just going to keep doing this for a little bit, I guess. The NCR is very suspicious of me. I mean, we could just accept them discovering me for a little bit, and there are other ways to try and put it down. But we also don't have to do that. We got very, very, very close to the 100 that I needed. 406 political power, man. That's rough. All right. The Washington Brotherhood lost? Oh, God. The NCR is way stronger than last time. Wow, okay. Yeah, no, that's fine, I'm sure. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah, great. This is fantastic. I'm thrilled. Okay. Okay, okay. Well, um, we have 50 days to get... Actually, I think this is going to work out about perfectly. Yeah, we'll have enough. We're not going to get discovered. We'll have to spend a lot of political power once again, but... We'll get there. Organize the sympathizer. Done. Arming Patriots tutorial. All right, here we go. We have gained the ability to arm Patriots. To do so, click on an NCR state and press the Arm Patriots button from the state menu. Which is... What? There's a button over here somewhere. Okay. States that have armed Patriots will flip to our side and spawn militia units when we decide to start the Californian Uprising. Arming Patriots costs more political power each time it is used. Gain a small amount. Okay, so let's let's take a look at that. So if we wanted to start, let's say, over in Redding, right? In this state right here. I don't see it. Apparently I have a claim on it. I don't remember that. I don't see a button. Maybe we have to wait until the end of the day. Huh. Am I crazy?
Resistance can only grow in non-occupied states. Yeah, that's not the issue. That's not it. Extremely hot. Yikes. What about, like, down in shady sands and stuff? No, I don't see anything for that. Is it a decision? I don't think so. No. What? Huh. This is clearly a very important mechanic that I need. Oh, there it is. You have to click on this. Okay. Hang on. So, for example, over here. Armed Patriots, it costs zero. We've armed them. This state has Patriots ready to rise up for America. So, if I sat around, I could potentially get all these guys armed? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We could start one heck of a civil war. Oh, this is interesting. Okay. Yeah, I like it. I dig this. This is... Okay, I think I'm getting it. Guerrilla tactics. Cool. Let's start improving our companies. Maintenance companies and so on. Okay, I'm saving up a little political power so we can press the button. I could... No, I can't wait. Let's go ahead and press the button now. National focus. Not gonna do a Californian Civil War right now. Doesn't make any sense. Nothing to be done over here. So instead... Let's do the Department of Defense. Spend that power. Oh, guess what? Look who's building up troops on my border. Hello. How are you? I am Lindsay Lohan. So, I probably want to place this... Okay, hang on. Now I need to think. How do I set up uprisings in a way that thoroughly cuts him off and lets me win the war. Like, Shady Sands, you can't do an uprising, but down over here, yeah, like... Where do I not want to fight? Where can I rob you of a bunch of victory points? Like, Sac City, for example. Like, I don't have to do everything in my own borders. I could just choose, like, his greatest, like, assets in terms of factories and strategic locations and victory points and just screw him over that way, right? Yeah, so Sac City will rise up for me now. So it goes up at a cost of 25 every time. Okay. Okay, this is interesting. I can get behind this. Probably. Um, we're still going to be needing to get things like encryption and decryption tech. I would like to get things like field hospitals and stuff as well, though. I'm looking forward to having that extra research slot from the Department of Defense. That'll be cool. Also some land doctrine bonuses. We're not gaining a lot of recruitable population right now. Only like 26 per day. We have some free factories again. I think we just focus on getting uh, military factories where we have the highest infrastructure. Which is in these places, respectively. Oh good, more units. Send them here. Okay. Um... So you don't have a lot of factories up over here, and I don't think you're even going to have very much in the way of defenses. Like, what about Junk Town, for example? You know, we can make Junk Town rise up, and they'll be in position right around Shady Sands. Sure, we'll get the high population centers on my side. That's all still ahead of time. We can go for the defense and breakthrough here. And we probably should. New national focus. Okay, hang on. So we can work on home defense. I don't need defense on um, th my home territory. Things like National Guard sounds great. Propaganda. Jingoism. Mobilization. Organization. Recovery rate. Leading to the wartime draft, which probably gives me a lack of stability. To get more manpower. Disciplined soldiers.
Yeah, this is the way to get a lot of recruitable population. Arms developments, industry upgrades, gearing up for war, power armor is cheaper. I like that. All right, go for arms development. I want cheaper, more power armor. We're trying to get ready for war, right? Now, the problem is, as I'm spending political power to do this, though, we are going to have a hard time hiding from the NCR. We keep spending political power trying to, like, raise up an army, but maybe we can't. Send out some new spies. I need to keep trying to put this down. Yeah, I think, I think we're reaching a point where I can't really justify trying to hide from the bear this way anymore. It sounded great for a while, but I don't think we can. I think now we're going to have to let them discover me. And there should be other ways of trying to hide, like, for example, suppress our resource or our construction or whatever. And that seems fine, because it gives me enough time to get so many more places ready for an uprising. Like these areas, like, we could really cut him off from a lot of his stuff. So I got Junk Town. Now I'm wondering if I can get an uprising in the right way. He's going to have his troops set up over here. If I get an uprising that surrounds him, does that cut him off from supply and makes him easy for me to kill? I don't know. I wonder... Arms some patriots in these areas. There's the arms development. We got maintenance efficiency. All right, I need more army experience before we're going to be able to do this. We can revive the air force. I want this, though. While we're sitting around, let's go ahead and crack the code so that we'll be able to get the Washington Brotherhood to attack them on demand. New recon companies sounds helpful to me. Still generating a fair bit of political power. I'm just trying to get set up for this. This is going to be really fun when it all comes together. Let's get the extra machine gun supports. We're about to finish recon infiltration, which gives me more recon. We have a boost to the soft attack and hard attack and recruitable population factor. So warrior code being a little bit faster is nice. We're not nearly as fast in our research, by the way, I'm noticing. As we were when we played as um, the genocidal enclave. Where would I send my paratroopers? That's a good question. I don't know if I would send them anywhere right now. We, we're going to need all the troops in position to, like, kill these guys. Maybe I would do one from here to, let's say, here. One from here to here. Areas where I can try getting, like, some cuts off set up, you know? Like this. Maybe. Let's do some training. You guys are green for no reason. We got some of you guys that need to train as well. Alright. Low on manpower. Yeah, what else is new? Do this once more. Um, maybe not that much, actually. Save a little bit of manpower. We actually have enough equipment to make that work, which is even better. Soldier caught out of uniform. I guess I'll do this. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't do anything in particular. Okay, so we have this. This. We have Junk Town. I'm trying to figure out how we can get like a quick path to go and grab things like Shady Sands. But also, I kind of like the idea of doing this whole cutoff thing. So, like, if I set up over here, and then here, would this technically cut off the reinforcements of this entire area, all of Northern California from Southern California, and would that make it easier for me to kill the troops that are currently set up over here? Like, to me, that's the question. That's what I want to figure out. And I don't know the answer right now. Crack the code. All right, so we're able to do this. We're able to start the Civil War. For the moment, I don't think I do anything. I think I save the political power. 
until we are either ready to start the war, which is going to be a while, or we're ready to gear up for war, for which I need 50 army experience, and we have a ways to go on that. So I'm just going to stack up 3.44 political power per day, so we'll be able to set off a whole mess of rebellion. For that, I need 125. We are going to accept that they are going to detect me in 50 days, and we're going to have to find a way to kind of placate them and hold them off. But when the time comes to fire that civil war, by God, I want to be ready for it. And then as soon as we set off the civil war, or maybe just before we set off the civil war, I want the Washington Brotherhood to attack. Okay, so these guys are ready to join my rebellion. So are you. So is Junktown. So is Sac City. Wouldn't mind having things like the hub under my control as well, but I think we can wait on that. Boneyard, blah, blah, blah. None of that really matters. If this cutoff works, it could be really, really good. I just have no idea. Never done this before. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm experimenting. Just like the rest of you. We are not ahead of time anymore. Let's go for the reliability and the speed for our power armor. Let's make them better. I want good power armor, man. It's more important to me than having a better soft attack. Alright. Yes, yes, yes. We have a crisis on our hands in 20 summit days. Let's arm some raider gangs again. Why not? Send out the spies. Fear factor. Soft attack. The 44 army experience. We're not going to immediately die. Vault City University School of Law. The first class of Vault City is graduating, and this includes the first crop of lawyers to be professionally trained since the bomb fell. Although some are already filling lo uh, filing lawsuits on behalf of caravan companies, manipulating the bottle cap futures markets, and having couriers deliver ca cease and desist orders to rival gunrunners, there is an upside. Some of these students want to join the reunited states government, while others are representing the neediest citizens in court. Given the Enclave's origins in the pre-war law firms, it's kind of touching. Maybe the reform path was a mistake. No! Lose a little stability, gain all that political power. Look at that. Heck, we're even not even that far from being able to do, like, the freaking hide the activities from the bear anyway. I mean, we're not going to, but we got close. If we just had a little bit more political power, we actually could have hidden from them. Which I find hilarious, but we're not going to. Instead, we're going to have some other things. The NCR is on to us for 100 days. All right, so we are going to temporarily eliminate our division attack. So they may be on to me, but for like 88 days or so, they can't detect me, which means I've got a chance to get a lot more political power and keep getting more rebellions. Okay, so we got all this. I'm going to arm these rebels here. And these rebels here. Okay, so we now have kind of this entire area that's going to join us. If I can grab this and this, that in theory means a full encirclement. Without having any troops in position. Which is hilarious. Alright, we're going to get a lot more army experience now. I'm going to be able to go for that ramp up of production. Done deal. Gearing up for war. Okay. The NCR declares a war on the Mojave Raiders. These guys right here? Alright, you're starting to work toward Hidden Valley. And the Hoover Dam. Hey, this actually means that you're going to be like right up against uh, the Kaisar. I'm kind of curious. Maybe they will actually fight each other, in which case that's an even better opportunity to start a civil war. A brilliant opportunity to start a civil war, even. Maybe. I don't know. Alright, let's see. So over here we need 200? It's getting expensive, man. It's getting real expensive to do this. But sure, we'll be able to start producing a lot more power armor. Upgrading whatever we can. So make sure we are still producing some amount of dynamite. Um, we can revive the Air Force, or I can just sit back and wait until I have a bit more political power. There is specialist training. If you can get the wartime draft as well. Which is exclusive with the disciplined soldiers. Political power, division attack and defense, or division organization. Lose political uh, population. Recovery, attack, planning... I think I kind of prefer Disciplined. That leads to Rank and File Infantry. Or Power Armor Integration? Ooh. 
So everything just gets better as if it had power armor. And then there's a new American army, which is really good. Holy crap, there's so much to do. Well, I don't care about the Air Force. And I don't have enough military experience to do any of this. So we'll sit back and we'll wait and we'll just generate political power. I think we're almost at a point where I want a fourth of the Civil War just for the fun of it. Looks like he is pulling back to fight over here. You know, all the more reason that maybe we want to cut him off down over here, but we have nothing to defend it, so it actually wouldn't do me any good. Okay, Kaiser's Legion has declared a war. The Whistler's Nomads started fighting some people, which is scary. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and arm these Patriots next. Probably want to start researching some better support companies. Like heavy machine guns. Warrior code is done. Combined arms seems good. It does reduce my recruitable population a small amount, but I think it's okay. Legitimacy sitting nicely at 81%, and we have some new troops ready to join the fray. Actually, you know what? I'm going to have you guys go over here so we can do different pair drops. I'm not sure where I want to pair drop yet, but I suspect that that's what we're going to want to do. When we start a civil war, all of Northern California is going to fall to me in no time flat. It's just a question of how well can we handle the South. And I think that's going to depend a lot on what the Western Brotherhood does. If we call them in, or rather get them to start their own separate war, I think we're going to be able to have some serious fun at the expense of the NCR. Could also have the Bishop Incident, which means that the Shady Sands will get hit down pretty quickly. But the Western Brotherhood is just stronger and has better tech. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.